Eh, vi ska gå vidare in i kunstig intelligens nu. Eh, för eh, som man nog börjar skönna så är er det ju till område som är er värna mot akkurat den utvecklingen och det sista nu som jag hör mer och mer om är er att man ska och laxen digitaliseras. Silicon Valley sällskapet Aquabyte etablerar sig nu i Bergen med teknologi baserat på kunstig intelligens vill det ge mer precisa målningar av alla förhåll i laxemärarna. Det är er en helt ny historia, er väldigt fascinerande så ta väl emot please welcome the CEO in Aquabyte Brighton Shang. So Brighton, uh, an American from the Valley, based in the Valley, coming to Bergen to set up a startup here. Tell us how that came about. Yeah, well, there's a bit of background. So uh, for those who don't know, I, uh, you explained it in Norwegian. Um, but uh, basically, well, Aquabyte's the first uh, company to apply a Silicon Valley approach to applying machine learning to fish farming. And so I had studied machine learning at Princeton and started a number of machine learning companies, uh, one that was in algorithmic trading, one that was in cancer detection. And so we were building uh, at that company, building computer vision algorithms to diagnose cancer with higher accuracy than a doctor. And so at the beginning of last year, had the opportunity to incubate a new company at NEA, which is a US VC firm. And mm. they were very interested in applying uh, machine learning to aquaculture. And certainly not something we know much about in the US, but uh, massive worldwide, and as we know, on the western coast of Norway, quite prominent. And so I had uh, come to Norway for the first time to attend Aquanor, and had uh, spent two, two weeks in Norway, going up the coast, visiting fish farms, just checking out the industry here. And it was amazing to see how the industry had progressed. and. Um, at Aquanor just had received kind of phenomenal reception. So uh, we're, we're building two main technologies. One is biomass estimation, so understanding the size of the fish, and also the other is lice counting, so understanding the lice count. And so this had been something that the Norwegians had uh, been doing manually, and there had been regulations passed. And so um, kind of it seemed like a perfect opportunity to apply machine learning. And so after going to Aquanor and I did, did the chance to visit Bergen and a number of farms around here were interested, uh, basically decided to set up an office here. Uh, we, we closed the last uh, vent venture round in December. Uh, Alliance actually participated, was one of our Norwegian VCs. And now we have uh, two employees in Bergen and also a, a team of uh, m machine learning researchers in San Francisco working together. Interesting, and, and let me now see if I can understand this uh, correctly. You you worked on detecting cancer with, with a camera that, that based on um, on, um, on a lot of data can can detect cancer. So it's, it's the same camera technology you use to measure the fish and to actually spot uh, fish lice. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Yes, yeah, so it's based on the same technology that you see in autonomous vehicles and drones and social media. In the last couple of years, they've developed these algorithms based on neural networks. And so uh, all the kind of demos you see from Tesla and other uh, Uber and all these all self-driving cars that are powered by these neural networks, and they can function similar to how the human brain works. And so we can use similar models that uh, we apply in cancer detection or, or autonomous driving to fish farming as well. And we can train this model to be able to recognize fish, recognize sea lice, and do everything much more efficiently. And uh, especially in these domains where, in, in, in cancer, where I can build a model that's 97% accurate, the 2-3% of error will kill someone, whereas in fish farming, it's a, it's a much more practical application. And, and, and I think you mentioned that uh, today, this is being done manually. Tell us how, uh, this is important, this is money, to detect, do I have sea lice or not? H how do farmers go about to, to find that out today? Right, so... Um, it's a manual process. Yes, yeah, so yeah. There, there, there's a regulation, and it's uh, regulated by the Maticina that every week the fish farmer has to go out and sample 10 or 20 fish and count each of the different life stages of sea lice. And so they go out every week to do this, and it's very important um, to make sure they have their lice levels to a certain uh, amount. And so for us, we can stick a camera in the pen and watch the fish swim around, and that same camera can both determine the number of sea lice, so we can identify them automatically from the footage, as well as size of the fish, uh, detect pellets, uh, determine behavior, all these different things that you can capture from the same footage. And so 
uh, we've been kind of working on these two main algorithms that are powered by the same underlying technology. And this is something happening now, I guess, because I had the uh, Telenor in my studio two days ago explaining how they now are putting money into the infrastructure. So I guess right. are they complementary with, with your work? Right. I think all the farms in Norway are going to need infrastructure to be able to be connected to the internet. And uh, we do a lot of our processing on the farm site, but we uh, it's, it's important to be able to have that data available such that uh, it can be stored in the cloud and be able to be analyzed and, and accessed. So absolutely. So, so here you are, Brighton, in, in Norway as a Valley startup guy. Um, what do you think of Norwegian uh, fish farmers, the, the economy here, the way we approach it? Yeah, certainly uh, it's, it, it's been great being in Norway. I think the uh, community here, it's a lot more um, easy to talk to people. And, and certainly I think there's, uh, while, while there's a lot of collaboration in Silicon Valley, a lot of people here are very accessible and it's very been easy to interact with the fish farmers and, and get their feedback. I, I think there's quite a lot of trust between people in Norway. Um, not something we're necessarily used to in, in the, the U.S. where uh, everything needs to be papered up and, and, and detailed. Um, so it's been really easy to get set up with the fish farmers here. And um, it's also actually been not that difficult to be able to have uh, folks from Silicon Valley come and visit the fish farms and develop the technology uh, together. But? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the difference is you see... Um, kind of stark differences in how businesses are grown in each of the locations. So in Silicon Valley, it's very regimented. So you raise capital uh, to get to the next round, which happens in a span of one and two years. And so if you don't reach that next level, then uh, that, that's just kind of natural selection of companies. Whereas in Norway, it seems like the pace of building business takes a bit longer. And so you see entrepreneurs working on an idea for three, four years. Uh, funded by, uh, by the government, which is great, but it, it's not the same level of speed at which we regrow companies in San Francisco. So, so what's your goal? Are you trying to speed it up in Norway or are you adapting, slowing down? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we uh, try to bring the same principles in, in Silicon Valley here. And I think there's a, a lot that we can bring back to the Valley as, we in, uh, as well in terms of kind of cooperation between uh, different people making it easier to uh, collaborate. I think there's a lot more collaboration that happens here. I, I think a lot of that naturally happens in the U.S., but uh, again, people are more guarded and uh, there, there's a bit more, it feel, feels like there's a bit more competition. And so I think um, kind of it, it goes both ways. Uh, I almost forgot to have to show the picture of you uh, at work here in, oh, uh, in yeah. Norway. Uh, uh, I guess yeah. it's a little different from, from the Valley. Uh, where are you in five years? What's your vision for this project? Yeah, so I think the first part is to be able to gather data from the farms. And once we know what the size is over time, so the growth of the fish combined with the feeding information, combined with the environmental data, our hope is to get closer and closer to developing a feeding algorithm. And so feed is the, num is the number one cost of running a farm. And so if we could develop an automated feeding algorithm that could save 20, 30 percent, or even a few percentage points in, in feed efficiency, that could be quite dramatic. And that has enormous implications for uh, both developing eventually automated fish farms that are not just in the fjords, but also in tanks and land. Uh, also working with the, the sales side. So a lot of the size information we gather is very useful to the sales organization that when they have a contract with a distributor, they know how to grow the fish properly to fulfill that demand. And so we're working both with the farmers. We're also working with feed companies to be able to design formulations that uh, grow the fish more uh, efficiently. And so I, and, and also kind of with the uh, d distributors and, and downstream players. And so I think it has enormous implications for profitability enormous implications for environmental sustainability and so our, our hope is to start in Norway uh, really grow this out for the salmon industry here and then from Norway bring this to the rest of the world whether that's Chile can in Scotland for salmon or other species of and then involved. world domination there's so much to ask but we haven't more time thank yeah. you very much uh, Brighton Shang right, thank you thank you